that I say is really important. It's just, it just, it just thoughts and things and mess together. Period. Let's go. Hi guys, welcome back to a bimbo fight episode of Give It To Me Straight. I'm your host, Maddie Morphosis, and on the show today, we have TikTok star and season 15 contestant, It's Sugar. Hi, Hello. hi, Maddie. Welcome, you're flying solo today. Are you, are you I nervous? know, thank God, I had it. I had to kick that one out. So I mean, I, I can barely get a word in edgewise. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> has it been that way? Like even before day one, I was like in the womb, like making noise. Is that crazy yeah. to think about? I, I just thought about it. Like it's crazy that like that person was just swimming around in a belly with you. That's crazy. Yeah. But that's, that's why I have my canned bit of like kicking her out of the womb because we're well, most twins they're like three minutes apart, mm-hmm. but we're fifty-seven minutes apart. Well, aren't you? You're the youngest, right? I'm the youngest. Okay, yeah. so you did kick. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Spice, she was natural, so she came, you know, coming out like a hot dog rolling down a hallway. Mm-hmm. And then for me, it was. I, but like, honestly, it makes sense. That's so me. Like, imagine nine months being cooped up with someone else. Yeah. And then I kicked her out, and then I was comfy. I was swimming around. I was mm-hmm. like, Ooh, I got space. You probably had elbow. Yeah, you had elbow, elbow room. room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like you knew her nine right. months longer than anyone else did. No, I know. And, you know, I have to remind myself because sometimes like, well, when we were younger, we would get into like brawls and we would be like fist fighting and like throwing punches and the neighbors would be, you know, like holding us back at the block parties. But yeah, it's like a sibling thing. It's like, do we hate each other? No, it's just, you know, your lace needed to be fixed. And Mm -hmm. I would rather someone like yell at me and be like, girl, fix your lace instead of. Do you want that or have you just been used to that? Um. What, what, what's the term whenever like, you're like uh, someone kidnaps you and you get used to them? Oh, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome, yeah. Maybe it's just more like Stockholm Syndrome where you're just like, oh no, I like being yelled at. I, yeah, they're doing right. it because they love me. Right. And You got Stockholm by your No, twin. I know. Well, I'm so excited now because, I mean, it's great. We have our like sleigh drag room in our house now because we live with each other. Mm-hmm. But I am so excited. We're moving out in January. We're each going to get our own place. It's time. And I can't wait to have like my own drag room and my own sanctuary because, you know, as we grow up and get older and I'm discovering, you know, my own individuality and who I am as a person, yeah. it's fun to, you know, develop your own little routine. And because mm-hmm. for me, I need peace. And yeah. like, I think I was just used to doing drag on Long Island with Spice and it was always chaos because, mm-hmm. you know, our room was above the garage and all of our drag, all of our boy stuff. Um, all of our makeup and all of our filming stuff was in one room. So it was like, it was the days we were getting to drag, as fun as it was for us, it was kind of miserable because there were so many obstacles mm-hmm. to get through. Yeah, that, that's like whenever we were uh, at our old apartment. We had a very small apartment, but then we had so much drag, especially getting ready for the show, which is shit everywhere. Oh my God. So it's like, you know, you're going to make dinner, you have to move a wig off like the kitchen counter, and like there's clothes very, everywhere. Very, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk more about your independence, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. So but we're going to reel it back for now. Okay. And again, like you are flying by yourself today. Spice isn't here, which yes. means that I have the honor of. Of interrupting you and cutting oh, you off. So, well, thank God, someone yeah. has to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is my <laughs> duty today. Well, uh, but I do, I do want to take it back because you're talking about being very young. I want to take maybe not that far, but I do want to bring it back to a younger, you know, sugar and spice. Okay. Aside from like your uh, color palettes, like how how are you different, like as children? So I was definitely the analytical, more introverted person like i am like i you, love my alone time basically and i know that's probably shocking because they're like bitch you can't shut up like you probably seem like the life of the party but i only have those moments because i'm always recharging mm-hmm. and then i can like oh i'm having fun but now i'm just trying to find my balance because i'm like i actually don't relate to being like this larger than life over the top person like i really just i'm a very simplistic person you know like i just want my dolls and my bike and my walks and that's you always had like less of a social battery than like spice did spice would you say spice was more outgoing one well it's interesting so spice was actually way more quiet growing up drag brought her out of her shell oh so i (laughs) On the outside, I was the more outgoing one mm-hmm. in the sense that I was just a little bit more anal. I, I'm I'm the mom, like, in a sense. Like, I was, 
I was the more dominant one. So as much as I have my introverted ways, I was getting stuff done for us. Like everything kind of fell onto me. Like if there was an issue in a household, it's like they were gonna go to me because basically I was the responsible one. Like I was cleaning up our mess basically. Yeah. Like Spice would get out Mr. Potato Head and I was like anal and OCD and I'd be like, no, you can't even play with her because you're gonna leave a mess. So I'm gonna put her away before you even play with her. That was yeah. me. That's normally more older uh, sibling or behavior, but it's the younger one in this one. So the roles are a little flipped. I think, yeah. Granted, it only is by like less than an hour, but still, right. you know, technically you are the baby. Yeah. I, yeah. You know what? But like, I love being the baby. Like, I love just being like a little angel baby. Like, it's fun. Yeah. Are y'all the youngest of the kids? Yes. Okay. I, th I do thought I did that research, but like, I'm not looking at your siblings and stuff. No, I Because, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> you know, there's... You whip uh, out the family tree. Level. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. the, um, yeah. Yeah, I want to learn a lot about the guests, but like, I don't want to dig into their family because then it gets weird. Mm -hmm. So and then, and then you just start going down, then you're mm -hmm. going through the tag things, and you're like, how did I end up on Wanda Sue's Facebook? Mm -hmm. Very that. So. <laughs> so was there any like a uh, feeling, because you are the baby, was there ever like, were you treated differently as children? Or was it really yeah. just copied and pasted experiences? No, you're treated very differently in the sense that... Got hit more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you are the way you are. Um, since I was the more responsible, dominant one, I mm. think I kind of got more of the brunts just put on me. But it was fine because I wanted to like protect Spice. Because it was always kind of us against our family because our bond was way stronger and theirs mm -hmm. because I mean we clung on to each other because if I didn't have spice I would have felt like such an outcast mm -hmm. and like my self-esteem would have been in the gutter if I was like going off of um you know just like my classmates peers and parents and family mm -hmm. and that's nothing against them it's just they couldn't relate to me so I probably would have been even more of a nervous anxiety filled mess if I didn't have Spice, because she always made me feel normal. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I was the kid that was obsessed with dolls and, like, girly and feminine, but Spice was that way, too. So it was like, oh, my best friend's just like that, so I'm yeah. not weird. So it's like two kids that aren't normal gassing each other right. up. And, yeah. So, yeah, and that's why we're delusional drag fiends now, because yeah, this yeah. whole time we're like, oh, bitch, you're yeah. thinking, and it's <laughs> like... Yeah, so really it's just like having the, the duo together is what made you less functional member of society. But yeah. you know, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's give and take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did, was there any like niche interest that you had? Like one of you had a very niche interest that the other one didn't have? Was there anything like that? Yeah. So I, I'm still more... Wah! You played soccer. She like dissected dead animals. They're like just two right. very different kids. Spice did cross country. I did soccer. But Spice was iconic. Is that a really different interest though? It's just athletics. Well, no. Well, here's the here's the tea. I was sickening in soccer. Like I got like oh, okay. my anger out. Like I was kind of like the little like star player. Like I was yeah. like knocking bitches over. Yeah. And then Spice, she was like last in cross country. Like she was just doing it for like the check, like for college. Like oh, she did an extra. How do you say that extra? Curricular, it's not happening for me. Mm. You said you were both like athlete, like athletes in a sense. Were you swimmers? You look like swimmers. Um, well, like we whenever, did... whenever I, I think of like pictures of the Coil twins, circa oh like twenty twenty, yeah. that's like textbook. But I imagine a swimmer looks like. You know, um, he's doing laps at the village pool. Well, there was the Babylon Village Pool. Shout out! We had our birthday party because mm, our birthday is in July every year. Um, but. What were we talking about? <laughs> I was saying, like, were you like swimmers? Oh, no. Well, we did swimming fish? lessons. So, but that by fourth grade, like every year in the summer, we would do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Ma, I don't want to be a lifeguard. I can doggy paddle. Like, I won't die. I'm yeah. done. So I tapped out. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. You got your braces off first, too. Like, did Spice have oh the more... Oh, my God. I'm loving this. Did, did Spice have the more fucked up teeth between the um, two? Yes, she so, did. So she had the fucked up teeth. You had the yes. fucked up vision, right? Yes. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. How do you... Well, I know that yes, because glasses. I picked you up today and I could see your eyes were noticeably bigger because you have like some, you have the chicken little glasses. Yeah. Yeah. I had to wear the eye patch growing up. Eye yeah. patch? Yeah. So basically, um, I'm basically blind in my right eye. I, I didn't find the pirate photo. I missed that one. So. Yeah. I had to pull that up. But I would literally wear like an eye patch to like your eye would train, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So uh, what was like your vision problem? Like, I do you, was... still, do you still have that same vision problem or? Yeah, so like I just have to wear a contact in one eye. It's kind of weird. Oh. So instead of being like, gotta put my contacts in, I go, gotta put my contact. Mm -hmm. But like speaking of your interests, at what point did you decide to give up on your acting career? 
acting career. Because at one point, like, you were an aspiring child star. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Wait, yes, you, 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 I never you were, talk about this. this yeah, you, so you guys should have. You guys could have been the next uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, but you gave up. There's like little, little uh, sugar. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So this was. Oh, y'all even this did, y'all, is so cute. I haven't seen this before. Y'all even did the uh, Mary Kate and Ashley because. Y'all did like some roles where you were each just doing the same part together. Like, yeah, so this was ragtime. Oh my God. Um, it's so funny. I kind of blocked this whole p- portion of my life out because I remember feeling so like I didn't fit in with the theater kids. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like we were, me and Miss Spice, we loved it. That's kind of how we found like our love for performing. And um, all throughout middle school, our first show, actually, no. Um, my first show was Susical in fifth grade. It was like the fifth grade play. Was this before fifth grade or? What, well, this what, was uh, this was like sixth or seventh grade, and this was okay. ragtime. We did we did the same role, so it was a few um, shows, and like we switched on and off. Mm-hmm. So that was iconic for us. How, how come you didn't like continue with like theater and do like plays and stuff in high school? You know what? Because every, everything about you says that you would have been a theater kid, like big personalities, right? Like, wanted, wanted to perform. There was a little bit of bully action with the teachers, and I hate to say that word, Mm -hmm. but literally my mom had to step in and she had to tell off like our choir teacher that also did the theater thing Mm -hmm. because it was there was like a whole setup that um, basically you had to wear like a red shirt to the concert. And we didn't we couldn't find a perfectly red shirt. We had like coral shirts, the irony. It was probably this color, it had to Mm -hmm. be red. And then basically there were whispers going around in the school that our teacher was going to embarrass us at the concert and make us change shirts. Because apparently he knew. We, it was, the details don't matter. Mm-hmm. But my, uh, we go there and then he like embarrassed us in front of the whole class. He was like, this isn't red. You guys need to change. And we were like, but you saw it like the other week when we went in rehearsal and you didn't tell us to change then. So then we came out and it was like... It was like this whole setup, it was bizarre. Then we called our mom and then our mom marched up because she was like, not on my watch. Like she was always the person to go down and like stand up for her kids. And then she walked in because my mom's a teacher too. And she was talking to him and she was like trying to figure it out, like what just happened. And then she was like, Hannah, because she goes, look at me in the eyes when you speak to me. You're a teacher. What are you, a little kid? And it was sickening. And then from your that mom was day that, your on- mom was that mom. From that day on, um, no one messed with us. Like she, like I remember, she demanded like a written apology, yeah. and she got all that. Like, but I think that's kind of after that moment in ninth grade, I was like, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be involved in this. And also, like I was just like the ensemble in the back, and at some point, it got corny to me. I was like, you know, you're the tree in the back, and you're doing the big laugh and all this, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, I got really into um, photography and like, you know, I was taking photos of my dolls and like, it was leading me in that direction. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. when that started. It's like being embarrassed in front of an audience. Could you imagine? I know. It's not for me either. I get I know, it. I, I get know. it. Is your mom the kind of person that threatens to sue people? She no. threatened litigation? No, I think she was just the person like, no one's going to ask with my kids. Okay. Okay. But I like that. Yeah. And I, it's like well, the way you're describing that story, it sounds like the next word would have been like, I will sue this school. Right. You know, I know. But. Luckily, you know, it wasn't that dramatic, but. Yeah. Didn't get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I was just asking an innocuous question about like, like, oh, why did she continue in theater? I didn't realize I was yeah. taking up trauma about being no, bullied I know. by adults. Yeah. But. It's kind of like drag, like in the drag world, it's like if you're a little bit different, then there's automatically a target on your back. And, um, me and Spice, we had like natural, like raw performing ability. Um, we saw, but yeah, <laughs> but um, well, then especially because you don't have any of those limiting beliefs yet, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the amazing thing about kind of having that naive, uh, being naive in a way, mm-hmm. because you know you think you can do it all before the world tells you you can't. But then the trick is you got to unlearn those things. And be like, no, I can do it all. Mm-hmm. So. We kind of joked about it earlier, but it kind of is true in that, like, because what other people are saying, you did have someone that was like always there to gas you up, you know? Right. Because you're like, because like, mm-hmm. well, I want to do this. You want to do this. Like, yeah. Why can't we? It's like, yeah, we can. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I cannot fathom the the number of bad decisions you make because you told each other it was a good idea. Oh yeah, I mean, and that's my, how you got to Drag Race. The irony of that show is. 
I mean, I don't regret anything, but there really is a formula to, I guess, performing well on that show that we mm-hmm. were unaware of. Like the silhouettes, yeah. for example. Yeah. Like for us, um, or we don't want to get into this right now. We'll talk, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into it. But uh, talking about acting, your actual passion lied behind the camera. Because yeah. like you, yeah, you and Spice were really big into photography. Yeah. What was it that made you want to like, step in front of the camera, though? Because you were behind it for so long. Like, you were like, mm-hmm. editorials, taking photos of your friends. Yes. When did you like want to be the center of attention? Yeah, it kind of left off in high school when we made the switch. We stopped doing the shows and... Um, I was doing doll photography, and then by 10th grade, I'm like, okay, well, you start thinking about college, you start thinking about your future. And I was like, well, like, I love taking photos of my dolls. Let me start taking photos of people. So literally, um, me and Spice, we had a photography account. It was called Drooping Willow, and we were kind of like uh, infamous in our high school. Everyone knew we had the photography account. And that was kind of my saving grace in high school. That's how, yes, all of them were kind of just using us because they wanted their slay Instagram photo of the girls to look hot for like their friends. But I was a shell of a person in high school and college, so I could never be in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Like I was still in that realm of, oh, you're not allowed. And like for me, I was like, oh, well, I want to make everyone else into this star. Cause like, and even now, I know that may be hard to believe, but my natural tendency is to be behind the scenes and create because I feel like I'm more effective that way because a lot of the times when I'm creating on myself, that's when I'll beat myself up. And well, you mentioned earlier that like with between the two of you, you're always more like the mother figure in a yes. sense, yes. More, like giving direction. And, yeah. 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 Uh, but like with, with photography, because photography wasn't just like a hobby. Like you actually went to college for yes, it, got your degree it. in it. And yeah. What, is that something you still have like aspirations for or are interested in doing? Oh or is that God. just a bygone era? Well, luckily, I mean, we had a drop. People were always like, why did you uh, you drop that? Well, we just got the associates and then dips after the mm-hmm. two years. I'm grateful for that experience, especially in college because the art kids, they're not far away from drag queens. And, you know, history repeats itself. Um, Where me and Spice, we were doing uh, fashion photography and beauty photography. Mm -hmm. And everyone at FIT, for the most part, they were doing um, conceptual art and wanted to be in the MoMA. Um, Where you wanted to do more kind of like editorials. Yeah. And And, uh, later on, I realized, oh, wait. It's not really photography I love, it's the transformation. Like, I loved, like, I wanted to literally, subconsciously I wanted to be the model. Like, I loved posing them and directing them and da-da-da. But as um, I advanced more and started getting the girls, from like, well, Amina was doing the test shoots and assisting for the other photographers, I realized, I'm like, oh, wait. The photographer, at some point, all they do is click the camera. Because I wanted to feel more a part of it, you know, like, with my visions, and I'm like, and that's when I turned to drag. I'm like, oh no, this is everything. Because now I can model. I was crazy. I was like literally posing the models in the yeah. thing and editing the makeup. But at some point, the makeup artist comes in the hair, or, you know. So yeah. So yeah. And I, then I, what also helped was coming out because, and then you can fully embrace all aspects of you. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh wait, this is my true passion. Um, uh, so yeah. Whenever you made the move to LA, did you do that for photography or was it for content creation? Well, moving to LA, so um, me and Spice, we were at FIT, did the two years. We came home from school and we quickly realized, you know, you got about six months until the student loans are coming in. And we're like, we're not going to be able to make money from photography. And that was, there was a lot of resistance there because I, I, well, Spice wasn't as into photography as me. Like, I was the kid, like, people would be going out, and, like, in college, I was staying home editing my photos of, like, the test shoot I just did. Like, I was always very determined to um, get out of the situation I was in. So it was like moving to L.A. was almost just like a, a reset for you. Just Well, L.A. represented freedom. L.A. represented... No more room above the garage. Right, no more room above the garage. And it's kind of sad because I remember thinking like, oh, well, L.A. represented me doing drag. Because I was like, I can't do it on Long Island. And the city, I I wanted a different experience from college. And it just felt to, you know, you you know, you're dreaming big. You're like, I want to go to L.A. It's just like, I wanted to do drag, and I'm like, this isn't going to work. I just need to do it now. I'm done waiting. Mm -hmm. And I was so scared because, you know, what baby drag queen has to, like, deal with, like, 
living with their family. Like you just want to be booger boots in the comfort of like your own apartment and like a city. I get what you mean though, just like moving to a city, even if you're living in squalor, just to have like your own yeah. space and that little bit of freedom. It's just And also yeah. starting something new, like I'm sure maybe even when you were starting the show, there's always a little bit of that fear of is this is gonna work like you don't know how it's gonna turn out. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun aspect of life, right? Like, why would we want to live if we knew what was right around the corner? Like, yeah. it kind of defeats the whole purpose. But, you know, you had to have a knowing of like, oh, this is actually gonna, like, work out. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I started drag, like, it was like the third time I did my makeup before, like, me and Spice debuted it online and, like, we kept practicing. And I would cry because I would, would get so frustrated because I knew what I wanted it to look like. And, um, you know, it was just weird when you finally put the pen to paper because I was watching makeup tutorials for years and all this stuff and like kind of living through that. I'm like, why am I not better at this? And I would question, I'm like, well, maybe it's not for me. This is too hard. Actually, this is so random. I specifically remember watching, like, I think it was like a Hey Queen interview of like Pheromone. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, how did she do her makeup? I was like, oh my God, am I horrible at this? With Farish, it's a shit ton of blush, but go on. Right, and I yeah. her. But, um, yeah, so I'm so happy I didn't cave in to that resistance. Because you always have, like, that person. It's just like going out to a party. It's like, oh, well, maybe I'll just stay in and do the Uber Eats. And, like, mm -hmm. you always have that. But you got to listen to the little white angel, white doves pulling you in yeah. the right direction. I mean, with drag, same thing with like going to LA. Sometimes you just gotta fucking do it, you know. Yeah. Just do it. Just gotta do it. Yeah, that's that's one of like it's, I don't know if someone ever told it to me, or if it's just something I read or just a mantra I came up with. But like I always like tell myself, I was like, the difference between you and the people are doing something is they just did it. Exactly. There's no rules. I mean, granted, like some people will have more opportunities, different you know living situations, you know nepotism, whatever. Right. But if you just do it, you're doing it. You know, right. and it'll either work or it won't. But like all these people, they're just fucking doing it. Right. Just, I always say the difference it. between someone that's sickening and someone that isn't sickening is that I the sickening person just believes they're sickening. Like we're all sickening. It's just a matter of if you decide, if you know you're sickening, then you're sickening. Mm. I know that probably that, makes no sense, but in my mind, it's a, it's a matter of just deciding. I don't, I don't think I vibe with that one. I don't think everyone's sickening. I think that's, that feels like a very everyone's a winner type right. vibe. Well, maybe it's this. Not everyone's a winner. Maybe the chosen ones that are sickening, uh, it's only because they believe it. Like, you wouldn't be sickening if you didn't believe it. I don't know. Mm. This, yeah. 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 <laughs> But well, yes. Um, <laughs> well, yes. Hey, you started drag. You started filming a bunch of content in drag, and through like TikTok and social media, mm -hmm. you built a presence that was bigger than most drag queens that have been like on Drag Race. At what right. point did you decide to go for Drag Race? Drag Race, I think, was a desire when we, me and Spice, first started drag. Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh my god, that'd be so fun to do. Like yeah. that's everything. It's, it's but then fun. when TikTok took a different life and we were like oh wait this is our avenue this is our lane mm -hmm. like we we gotta dive right in that's when i actually started having resistance of, i actually don't think i should be on the show i don't think it's me and it's and then you know then we go to la we were we bit the bullet and we're like okay let's just do it like it will allow us to grow and subconsciously i really wanted to do it and i know like this is kind of cringy but like i wanted the community i wanted drag friends mm -hmm. like i I knew that would benefit my life. Yeah. Um, Cause like so with your audience, like you were cultivating, like they loved your drag and like, what right. you're doing, but a lot of that audience too was not drag fans. They were drag not. Race fans. No. Like, it was like TikTok kids and yeah. yeah. It was so different and um, I'm so grateful for that because it showed me drag in a different way. And it also showed me how important what we do is. Because in our own niche little bubble of the gay world and all this stuff, we all know RuPaul and we all know Porkchop and mm -hmm. whatever. But it wasn't until we started TikTok I realized these kids only know who James Charles is. They've never even seen RuPaul because, you know, TikTok was so young. Like, it really, um, the age demographic really was leaning on the young side. Mm -hmm. um, and this was before the blow up in 2020. So we were posting our drag stuff just for funsies because it was technically like musically and it was kind of like a joke. Yeah. This is before Britney Broski changed the yes. world. Before, yeah, 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 yeah. 
And we were getting comments being like, what is that? Like, we, it was really easy to go viral at the time because there just wasn't a lot of content mm -hmm. on the app. So we were getting a lot of attention because they were like, is this James Charles in a wig? Like, that's what we kept getting. Because mm -hmm. all they knew was a boy in makeup. And we're like, oh my God, we have to... We had to let these kids know what drag is. And that's kind of how we started really popping off because we were literally explaining the difference of, I think one of our videos has like over like 20 million views because we were like telling the difference between what a drag queen is and someone who is trans. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's common sense. I'm like, how do you not know the, what? Yeah. But like these people, they don't. A lot of those kids on, the kids on TikTok, they're in Kansas or wherever the fuck. Yeah. They don't know. Like, yeah. There's a difference between like ill intent, but there is like some genuine, just genuine ignorance. Like even and that's the fine. stuff that we think is basic, it's just like so far fetched and it's like right. they, they, people don't know what they don't know. Right. And you know what? If we were able to be, you know, I for some reason I this I don't know if this happened, but in my mind it did that there were like kids in middle school and maybe there was someone making some fun of like uh, Stephanie in the class for like. Oh, like, is she a drag queen? Is she trans? Da, da, da. And then, like, I feel like a kid stood up and was like, no, well, actually, I know Sugar and Spice on TikTok, and they're drag queens, and that's cool. And, like, I feel like there was a teaching moment there. I don't know if it happened, but in my mind, it yeah. did, and that makes it worth it. But as many people as, like, followers you had, as many, like, views and you had in your videos, surely someone was affected in a positive way. Probably that's a lot in a negative way, because you probably well, inspired a lot of kids to do drag. Right. So financially, you ruined a lot of people. But... There's probably yeah. a couple positive stories in there. Yeah, you know. Let's hope. But like I said, you amassed like such a large following mm -hmm. doing drag. Were you worried about going to Drag Race and how that might affect the following that you had already cultivated? No, I, I probably should have been, but I was kind of. I looked at Drag Race as like a gig. Um, like I was like, no, I'm here to like work and entertain, and you know. Um, probably make some new fans along the way, but there was a comfort, um, which probably put a target on me and Spice's back. We were very comfortable in front of the cameras because I was like, no, like this is just like a set day. Like we're going in and like, it wasn't clicking to me that it was a competition because mm -hmm. I was just, I'm just so into TV and all of like that and like the production side. So I, it didn't click that I, it was like actually a competition. Like me, I'm like, oh no, I'm here to the end. I was hired for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that was my mindset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know what I say about Drag Race? Drag Race? <laughs> you are hired to be a temp worker. Well, you know, you are, you are a seasonal hire. You're a temporary Oh help. yeah, she was the sickening seasonal hire. Yeah. Um, You're a substitute teacher. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say Drag Race is like being cast um, in a movie, but you just don't know your role. Mm. But if you're smart enough, you can figure out your role before it's too late. Yeah. For me, I was just casted as... Um, PA. I, I died first, but I was like a main character up until my death. So oh. like it was an, I was it like was, integral. You, you were you were a, the shocking main character death in Game of Thrones. It's just right. like oh my god, they killed. And that like you had to get. Off. It was good. I mean, the producers kind of slayed that. They were like, okay, we'll cause up drama, put snatch mm. game right here. They saw our. Uh, oh my god, I have to. We had to upload those. Um, was your snatch game audition better than your actual snatch game? For sure, for sure. Um, but also. It's funny even talking about this because it's like I know how it came across and it looked crazy. Mm -hmm. But like in my mind, I was giving just as hard. Like I watched the audition tape and I was like, oh, I was giving that the day of. But also it's like the performance was an acquired taste, you know. And the thing is, I was actually even crazier, but they kind of cut out all that stuff. Like I was really going off script. Like I was. Did you put fake teeth in? No, but <laughs> I was I was trolling Rue. Like I was like the internet troll. So I was mm -hmm. like, he was talking to the pit crew and I was going off script. And that's probably why he, they hated it. But to me, that's my humor. Mm -hmm. I don't really like ha ha he he humor. I kind of like absurd stuff. Like I like when, you know, people like the, the stakes are high. So like for me, I was like, oh, this is improv. So like Rue would be like talking to um, the cute little models and I'd be like, oh my God, Rue, like why are you flirting with them? Like, oh, 
That's why you guys sent home. Did you you yeah. home that episode, right? Yes. Yeah. So there it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was bad. But it you know, it definitely you know didn't what? Like I'll it. have to post the audition tape um, soon and y'all can decide if it was absolute garbage or not. I will say that whenever I was watching the season, what I thought they were going to do with y'all is, uh, and I remember talking to Cornbread about this too, like whenever you were cast, we're like, what they're going to do, I think in producer mind, like, there's probably gonna be a I moment. love producer Maddie. Ooh. Well, I was thinking like, because they're twins, so they're probably gonna perform very similarly, like in right. challenges. You know, they grew up together. You know, right. I was like, what's probably gonna happen? They're both gonna end up in the bottom at some point. They're gonna make them lip sync, and they're gonna send them both home at the same yeah. time. It's gonna be the gag. You know, because I was like, they're not gonna make one of them go in the competition right. without the other. Yeah. Just for yeah. cruelty reasons. You no, know? I know. But I I, I messed happened. it up for us. I, I triggered Rue, so I had to get the axe, yeah. but it's fine. You done goofed. But. Yeah. But again, with uh, you, you two being largely like social media based queens, you didn't have a lot of the the experience like queens have running through like the drag circuit, going on oh, gigs no, and shows we were and so stuff. inexperienced. Wait, that was like lip syncing your biggest fear in the competition? No, because the thing is, and even looking back at the person I was when I was filming the show, um, I always knew I was everything. And you know, that might be hard to see watching it, but, you know, if you're not your biggest fan, then who is going to be? Like, the irony is I didn't even have an exit line. I didn't even say anything because I was like, oh, no, babes, I'm here to the end. Like, I'm I'm that girl. That's bold, but, right? that's, that's bold that you're in the workroom having never done a gig before and yeah. Sasha Colby walks in and you're like, yeah, I, know. I got this. Because I know my limitless potential. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I know my virtual reality. I know where I am 10, 20, 30 years from now. But everyone else only sees my physical. Well, so of to course- be, To be fair, you didn't know where you were gonna be a month from then because you didn't make it that far Oh, the right, yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. You're living in the moment. Yeah. But um, I don't regret it because, you know, as an artist, especially when you're starting, like, you know, that was only three years into doing drag. And, you know, you think that's going to be your peak and like you're going to you're showing everyone like your uh, your best drag and all this stuff. I'm so happy I went. I don't want any of the rest of my drag show. And I'm like, no, just like pay attention to what she's given now, because babe, that wasn't going to be cute anyway. We showed some good looks. You didn't have any more good ones, any fun outfits. Well, OK, the gag is I went home. Maybe you can relate. <laughs> but you go home and you think you're just like boo-boo the fool. You're like the biggest flop in the world. You're like, oh my God. You're like questioning everything. You're like, oh my God, am I really hot boo-boo garbage? And I got this thought in my head of like, oh my God, all my other looks were horrible. But recently, I'm going to be posting them soon. Um, I kind of got into some of them I never showed. Because I was like, I'm not even going to give these to the fans because they're going to be reading me down. Like, oh, that wasn't runway ready. But you know what? It's like... That's drag. Like, a lot of the looks I made for the show was with my best friend, Eddie, and he had just started sewing. And those are the best memories, like, getting ready and we're uh, at my house and we're spray painting my heels mm. and, you know, putting things together. It's like, I want to trade those memories for the world. That's what life is about. Do I wish my looks could have been more couture and sickening and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my vast knowledge of drag and fashion could have been then? Sure. Yeah. And it would have played out differently, but... You know, that wasn't my journey. Yeah. And um, I think you turned out good looks in your time there. Yeah. Some yeah cute I'm looks, mad at tailored. it. And yeah. yeah, Nature was a finalist and she just wore like the same cat suits the whole time. So, right. Yeah. But you know, yeah. she um, she had talent. <laughs> That's true. That is she very could, true. She could move, you know. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But speaking of which, like your performances, uh, like between the two, like say you do develop slightly differently. Yes. Which of the two of you, which one would you, would you say is the bad dancer and which one is the even worse dancer? Um, I'm the bad dancer. Spice is the even worse dancer. Mm. But what I learned recently is I need to stop, be so, stop being so self-deprecating because you almost start to believe it. And, you know, just because you're different, it doesn't mean you're bad. Um, on the show, yes, we're very experienced. I still will consider myself an, an experienced performer, but you know, I'm so happy I don't have to play the game anymore. Mm -hmm. That is such a weight off my shoulders. Like the weight of Drag Race or the weight of? The weight of Drag Race and also doing what everyone expects a drag queen to do. Oh yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of my struggle with the show. I think, you know, every year, it's basically about finding the same carbon copy of a queen, but just kind of 
uh, randomizing what they look like. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I it's think, like you, you, you know, they want everyone to be well, well rounded and or maybe it's more the fan base. They just get on you. If you're not a dancing diva that's doing a split yeah. and a, um, a cartwheel on the back bend, you're not valid. So I think it's a universal experience for a lot of the queens that have been on Drag Race in that you're doing your own drag, your own art the way you do it back home. In the moment you're cast for Drag Race, it's like, oh, I need to be like this very specific image and certain like brand right. for drag race and I need to be a certain way but then after leaving the show you start to find like yourself again of you know in oh like my it's like oh no people yeah. actually love the uniqueness and the differentness and well, no one's good at everything no there's not no. y'all tell me right now there's not one queen in the franchise that can check all the boxes no and would you want to want that like the one thing I will say about you and your drag though is that like it is very consistent because even from day one, like the dance moves haven't changed. Like you're still. Oh my god! You're still the same. I'm person. the same. Person. You know what? She was always having fun on Drag Race. You did always seem like you were having fun, yeah. even though it was the most taxing and draining Great. experience of your life, and yeah. you're probably back in the hotel room crying. But on that <laughs> stage, you looked like you were having a blast. I was because it was giving like drunk, uh, drunk girl at a brunch. Oh. Yeah, but you know what? I spiritually, like, that's me, like, deep down. I'm, like, the girl in the bathroom being, like, you're the definition of unconditional love. You're the sister I always wanted. And mm -hmm. it's, like, bitch, I just met you. But, okay. It, it is, like, infectious to watch. Because, like, watching on Drag Race, it's, like, oh, uh, she's right. probably going to go home. Right. So, like, this is not looking too right. good. But at the same time, too, it's, like... Okay, it's got people doing this. Though. Uh, it's like it's like um, the, yeah. the um the white meteorocracy at its finest. It's like oh, she's got to move it. Hey, mm -hmm. um, before anyone tries to read, too, I acknowledge that I did not do great performing either. But right. yeah, I'm also camp. So right, right, we're camp. Yeah. You know, there's no such thing as a bad performance. Only um, camp mm -hmm. or it, everything's camp. Yeah. Um, I will say um, I got a really nice compliment when um, I was traveling doing the gigs, and. It wasn't until this person said this to me, it kind of put it into perspective. And, you know, I was probably being self-deprecating and being like, oh, sorry, you had to sit through that one, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they grabbed my hand and they had a serious moment with me and honestly, I needed that. And they were like, no, you might not perform like those other people, but you don't have to. You can stand there and your light is just, it, it comes through you. And they were like, I just want to see someone that's living their joy because that inspires me mm -hmm. so they were like don't you know don't have these people making you feel bad and i was like okay well i'm happy you liked it mm -hmm. <laughs> but no she was right it's like you know it's not about um hitting all the moves it's about hitting the hearts yeah i mean i i said this before whenever i did like um one of the first videos on the channel with deja i did like a review of the season 15 cast beforehand like i knew you guys weren't like live performers right but also too i think people would think like if you're not performing live you're not doing drag but i also think too that right with like social media there is a new medium for drag right and it's just you're performing for a different audience for sure it's like yeah you're not performing for, you're not dancing for right. you know 100 people in a bar right. but you are creating content entertainment right. for people you know because even rupaul rupaul doesn't perform live Right, yeah. RuPaul was more of a socialite and like going out right. to like gigs and having a presence and creating like parties the and songs scenes and, and yeah. going on talk shows and being a personality. And I feel yeah. like honestly what you're doing is more akin to that than what a lot of drag queens are doing. But yeah, and social um, media queens are valid. Yes, they're totally valid. And, you know, I know we were definitely holding that TikTok flag high when no one, well, thank God we have Plastique. Uh, she was uh, making mm -hmm. the TikTok girls look good for us. Um, you know, we're going to get the brunt, but hopefully the next person that comes up through social media, hopefully we made it easier for them. Yeah. Well, like, uh, even with, with like drag in particular, it's like, yeah, if you go to a show and you perform live, people are probably going to say like, wow, this is the most impressive or craziest number right. I've ever seen. Right. But also too, like you're creating content that other drag queens can never, you know, like right. like Kennedy Davenport is one of the most amazing performers I've ever seen. Yes. But she cannot probably couldn't make a viral right. TikTok in the way consistently the way that you do. Right. It's just it's you different media. Strengths. It's different mediums, different strengths. And I, th I feel like Drag Race wasn't the best competition setting for the type of drag and for performance sure. style that you guys were doing. You know, it's yeah. like I said, it's even akin to like RuPaul in a sense, where if you put RuPaul as a contestant on right. Drag Race, she wouldn't make it far. Right. It is what it is. Right. Like she might do like put her in a lip sync. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just different mediums. I think people that have the mindset of like drag queens have to be like performers exclusively is a very antiquated mindset. And it's stuck in a world that didn't have these new media. Right. And the fact that drag is now, it's being in movies, TV shows, stand-up specials. Like, it's it's showing that progressive and drag is reaching right. out to more people in different ways. We should, as drag queens, we should aspire more. We should aspire for more than just collecting, if we're lucky, $100 in tips in a club. You know, it's like, that's why I will champion any drag queen that is going to put themselves out there. And even you with this show and having your own platform. To me, that's everything because I want to see drag queens do what they do, not in a competition setting. It's like, we're artists. Like, let's just show art. Let's have fun. It's like, I feel like competition, with Drag Race being the only, the top, platform of the way people are mm -hmm. consuming uh, drag, it just, it sets the whole world up for a weird thing because now everything has to be critiqued because they mm -hmm. think it only exists in that. And for me, it's yeah. like, no. Yeah, it, it created a new metric for people to compare drag to because before back in the day, right. you go to a live show, you either like it or you don't. Right. But now it's like people will go to the show and they'll be like, oh, yeah, she's really good. Her makeup's good, but it's not as good as this person on Drag Race. She right. wouldn't make it on Drag Race. And people and have that mindset. So, they have yeah. this weird inherent bias because of the show. But and it's like, that's not yeah. the end all be all. And the thing is, it's like being on Drag Race now, it's really not that special. The, how many queens are there? Yeah. But with season 15 and your sibling going much further than you in the competition, because she was better than you in every way. What kind of well, effect got what, what kind of effect did that have on you post show? Like, how how did that affect like your mindset? Did you have this thinking of like she did she's right. better than me or? Well, I was just happy uh, uh, there was a little piece of us that made a little bit further because mm -hmm. <laughs> secretly I was able to live through her still. You know, I was like, oh, okay. Did um, you not feel like any kind of like slight like resentment of like she gets to have no. this experience further than I do? Basically, I knew there. After my snatch game and what happened, like with Rue, there was no way in hell they were gonna like me. But I knew they would like her a little bit more, even though they still hated her. Mm -hmm. But like, I was like, I, I didn't stand a chance just because I knew they personally didn't like mm -hmm. what I stood for. And that's different from just like, oh, they didn't like your performance. It's like, no, they don't like your being. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but y'all's drag journey was kind of taken together, and you've always been like just together with, with each right. other on the entire ride. But with the competition, especially with like the fan base's mindset. The, the fan, it wasn't there because when we were shooting, that's when we were like, we were the closest we ever were, honestly. Yeah. It was, um, well, a funny story is I was kind of in for like a rude awakening. I remember getting back the first and only time I read Reddit because it's like, oh, everyone, all the rumor cast, like, oh, these people are going to be on, right? And I was just exposed to, yes, I got a lot of hate because like whenever we would go viral, we would reach the Bible belt on TikTok. But really, it was just our fans that loved us and understood us, right? And they yeah. knew what we did. Those ignorant kids in Kansas. Right, of course. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, like I was reading like the one th uh, thread and I was like, oh my God, people hate us. And then I think once it was rumored that I was out, um, you could not find, because subconsciously you're like curious what people are saying about you. It's like curiosity kills the cat. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was sitting home. It was like me, Poppy, and Irene. I, it was like the hot girls only eliminated club. And I was holding down the fort for the girls and you're waiting for everyone to come back, whatever. And I remember just being like, oh my God, am I like this horrible drag queen? Like everyone basically, the consensus was, the people that weren't fans of us or Drag Race fans, they thought the character we were doing on TikTok, that was the real us, like our bimbo shtick. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot, of, oh my God, they're so annoying, da 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 yeah. And then it was just a lot of no one, you could not find one nice thing about me because it was like, you really hated us, but if you kind of liked one, it was, it was going to be Spice because they knew she made it further. Mm -hmm. So I remember leading up until the show, I was actually so surprised with the reaction when the Meet the Queens came out. Because, and you also feel with the other girls on the cast, like if you go early, they're not invested in you. They don't care. Yeah. They, they see you in a certain way. So you get that treatment as well. So you're just kind of like, mm. it didn't shake me though. Cause it's like, again, I know my un, 
I know my limitless potential. I, I, knew, I know a secret that everyone else doesn't know. So that always comforted me. And I knew, it's just like everything in life. People always look back in hindsight and sing a different tune. I, I think too, like with every season, people want to have, before the season even comes out, people want to have their favorites, but they also right. want to have someone that they don't like. You know, they right. want to have that duality. You know, like for my season, it was me. Is you know, right. the easiest person to oh just like. Oh my God, we were both the like gag. Yeah. Uh, imagine if we were on the same, imagine they're like, we're going to get the straight guy and the identical twins on the same. Now that would have been. <laughs> it, was, it was the same thing, but it's like, I understand like where they're coming from. I understand the mindsets, but also too, like I know like where I stand, I know like what I'm going to do. You know do. your truth. Yeah, I also know too that like I've been doing drag for years. I know the people that are actually in the scene. Right. You know, I care more about my peers and the people Real involved life. in the community than people on you know, fourteen right. year olds in Kansas. Right. But you made a good point that if you go further in the season, people tend to care about it more. But with your identical twin, who you've been on this journey with, right. went almost like twice as far as you in the competition. Right. Did you yeah. feel like for the first time in your drag career that you started to take a back seat to Spice? Oh my God. For sure. I mean, you know, everyone was really only rooting for her in a sense. And I was grateful because I was like, well, at least they're rooting for one of us. But I think subconsciously, my mom mode um, just went into just really focusing on her. And I'm grateful that like we presented so much as a duo on the show. So now we will always be like you will always associate us together. And it gives us um, the, you know, free reign to explore our own individuality and not having to be like showing that we're twins. Cause that was, you know, the majority of our come up. Like we really, I know it kind of looks like, well, thank God we wanted it to look effortless. Like mm -hmm. we were, um, just these straight boys jumping into heels as drag queens. But, um, little did they know everything we did was so intentional. Like it was a formula. And honestly, like, I know no one would give us props, but every week we were hitting it. We were getting our viral video because we were really smart and analytical about it. Yeah. Like, we noticed quickly, oh, if we present as gay boys in the beginning of a transition, it's not going to go viral. We have to, like, catfish these people. So I understand the misconceptions about us because on the outside looking in, it probably looked like we were just, like, these cute little like gay boys that like thought drag was like a joke and we were like oh let's just go viral for it almost meanwhile like, almost like being like disingenuous for the sake of clicks right, and clickbait right. and things like that but for us we were broke and wanted to get out of our house so we were like this is the fastest way we're going to get money and mm -hmm. we knew it was temporary um so now I'm just happy I don't have to do those crazy games to you know get out of a um toxic situation yeah even before Sugar and Spice, back when it was like the Coil Twins, mm -hmm. all the way growing up, did you ever feel like you didn't have an identity outside of being one of the twins? I didn't feel that way until I had my spiritual um, awakening and my whole life came crashing down. Because pre or, uh, pre or post Drag Race? This was in 2020. So this was before okay. Drag Race. It was after talking to this person and having like a heart to heart I was like, oh my God, I've never talked to someone and had a real connection with someone one-to-one -one because all of my experiences have been spiced by my side. Mm -hmm. And then that next day, I called up my friend Carolyn, I called up my friend Angie, I go, we're having a solo hangout. And then from that day on, I made it my mission. I go, I need to find me and who I am when Spice isn't around and Spice had to do the same. Did that cause like tension between you whenever you want to kind of branch out, do your own thing? And Spice is like, what do you mean you want to do your own thing? What do you mean we're not going to this party together? Of course. And um, there was a lot of that. Um, but we got over those growing pains because deep down we knew it would only help. But it's just weird when you know your assumed value is that you have like a second half, uh, another half. Mm -hmm. But then it gets weird when you're like, but do I have value by myself? And it's weird. Like, if you're not a twin, maybe you don't get it. But you literally have to fight for your individuality. You have to fight mm -hmm. to be seen as your own person. And um, luckily, I let that go. Because now it's like, I don't, 
have to prove anything. I'm just existing. I'm living my own life. And, you know, I just, I want to be happy. So I'm not even trying to do any of that anymore. Like, if you see me for me, great. If you think I'm a clone of someone else, cool. I don't care. But as I said, like, you've done so much stuff, like, as a pair. But I have noticed you both starting to post a little bit more independently online, making mm-hmm. your own content outside of the group right. projects, essentially. <laughs> Even today, like I said, you're here doing the interview by yourself. Mm -hmm. Spice is not in the other room waiting to go next. No, I know. It's literally just you. Are are you wanting to carve out more lanes for yourself and like separate identities? You know what? I think I'm finally comfortable to focus on me because we have us worked out. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there was a time this summer where we were definitely disconnected and it was like, oh my God, is the band breaking up? But ultimately, we needed that break and the cord needed to be cut because now it's like there was resistance because we had differing views on drag and what we wanted to do and things. And and we needed to allow ourselves the permission to run free like you're good you got you we don't have to be so connected anymore Mm -hmm. and now it's like we know what we want to do together we know our projects and ultimately that's our gift we were brought into this world to make magic together Mm -hmm. you know it wasn't a fluke it wasn't um it wasn't by chance like we entered these i like to say like we're just souls living a human experience. Like we are not our physical bodies. And, um, you know, whenever I had anxiety or I'm like, oh my God, like, am I strong enough to handle this? I'm like, no. Before you stepped into your life, you knew everything that was gonna happen to you and you can handle everything because you decided, you're like, oh, I I can handle that. That's why I'm stepping in. Well, you're kind of touching on a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about because uh, you recently put out a video on your own personal channel, and it was one of the most like vulnerable moments I had seen of any of the content you did. Yeah, it didn't feel curated, and it wasn't done with spice. It was just kind of you just talking to the camera, and you mentioned things like trying to find happiness and find peace, and right. you also mentioned going through a lot over the summer. Right. Like if you could, you don't have to, you don't have to share more than you're comfortable with. No, yeah. But like what kind of what happened over like the past summer that right. brought all these thoughts to the forefront. <laughs> It started with me being overworked, let's just say that, in the sense of, but I did it to myself. Like, and it was my mind going a million miles a minute. And like, for me, like once I get inspired, me and Spice are crazy. Like once, like after we'll do like the longest filming day in drag, we wake up even more inspired because I'm in my creative vortex and the ideas are coming. But then my body, like my mind was going so fast, but then my body caught up. And that's when the negative, the self-sabotage came in. There were a lot of things that were adding to me feeling uncomfortable in my own like skin. Like it got to the point where my friends had to come over and like help me clean my room because the thought of picking up my clothes was probably gonna make me like die. Like it was that dramatic. Because awesome. I had so much on my plate, even mentally, I had to eliminate something. So doing the dishes and doing all my normal things and self-care. So that was all on the back burner. And then it's like, that's when I never had an issue with food, but that's when like I started binge eating. It was like, I didn't have any control. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't feel safe in other aspects of my life. So I would be going, I would be walking all day. Mm -hmm. I, I, cause I, then I didn't want to go back. It was just so many things. And you know, it didn't help feeling like me and Spice weren't good. It didn't, it, that broke me and that broke her and we were broken. And like, you know, you, you convince yourself you're okay. And for me, it was like my whole world was turned upside down. I like, I don't know. I feel like I'm already, like, I'm already, I've already blocked it all out because like, I feel like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I overcame and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And like, even the other day I was like having a really hard time. And I wanted to go back into those old habits that I developed over the summer of being addicted to, I couldn't be happy unless I was high. Like it was such a crutch Mm -hmm. because I, there was nothing in my life to be like happy about. So I like, I had to be high. I had to be walking. I had to be like scarfing myself of all this like horrible food because that was my only happiness of the day. Oh, what am I going to eat today? I'm not a psychologist or anything, but that sounds like textbook depression. 
Yeah. It was, <laughs> like I was, impression. yeah, I um, was abandoning everyone and it was weird. But also I think what added to it was I was done with looking perfect. It, that I was like, that was also like, I think a subconscious factor of always feeling like I had to like, you know, you feel like you have the world against you. So if there was one thing I control, that would be like, okay, well, I need to look my best. I need to do this. But then it gets so exhausting because you're constantly beating yourself. You can never be happy with yourself. So even like growing up whenever you're very young, say getting braces, getting contacts, having your teeth whitened whenever you're like in high school and like being fit. Right. So with the mindset of like having to be perfect, is that something that was really triggered by Drag Race or was it a lot more deep seated just like growing up? Like how long term were these? It definitely got triggered through Drag Race in the sense of... A lot more magnifying glasses on you. A magnifying glass, but also... And I'm not going to say it because they didn't even air it. But there were words that a specific judge said to me. And that motivated the hell out of me to prove those bees wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't have to prove anything. I'm amazing at everything just for existing and everyone else is the same. We, I'm done with the like trying to get like accolades and trying to like prove my it's like mm -hmm. that it's never enough when you when you go down that path it will never be enough you will always feel unsatisfied so you know i had to have a minute to be like i gotta get myself together because you know what these people won they got me mm -hmm. i always say the biggest scam is you believing it and you know people say things to you know make themselves feel better and hopefully put you down and you know what? They got me down. And it also didn't help too that as you were experiencing all this, is also whenever like said the twin, the person that's always been there. Yeah, for I you. felt like I had no fam. Yeah, and then you feel all alone, and then it's like you don't want to be a burden to your friends, and then you're just yeah, you feel lost. Like in the in the video you posted, like I said, it was very cryptic in a sense. <laughs> I know I wasn't gonna post it because I'm like this probably makes no yeah. sense. But also the whole point was for me to be like I just gotta say something. Well, also too like with you posting it, it, it felt like less of like a public service announcement and more of like a therapy just to have like, yeah, you know, some, something to bounce off, bounce off of just to right. say your thoughts out loud. But with that, like it, like you know what you're talking about, but others don't. It, right. it, it was kind of cryptic and vague at some time. No, I know. So I just like I wanted know. to like, just ask about a couple of things you yeah. touched on. But one of the ones was you were talking about how it was very difficult being seen. Was that yeah. also like a, in a reference to Drag Race and having all these new well, eyes on you? The thing, it goes back to the self-deprecating thing. So you go along with the story of, oh, I'm this like horrible person that needs to prove themselves. But then when in real life, the reaction was different. That was the shock to the system. Wait, someone could actually be nice to me? It always feels, the negativity always feels bigger because if I actually look back, it really was so much love, mm -hmm. um, just initially. Well, but you said earlier too that like, and I, and I agree with it also, like the negativity is a lot louder. So yes. if there's, you know, there could be a hundred people in the room all telling you you're beautiful, but all it takes right. is one person and say your right. eyebrows crooked and it fucks you up for a week. It's not that I was affected by it because I'm like, oh no, babe, like if you think this is a hate comment, I'm saying meaner things to myself, you know, like I already clocked like, and the thing is, it's like, that doesn't help anyone because the way you speak to yourself, you start to believe it. So you have to be careful. And all of that negative self-talk to just beat someone to the punch because they're going to make fun of me. I'm like, oh, well, I just felt it. It's like... Instead of a defense mechanism, you're defense. almost like enforcing what they're saying about you. Right. It just, it was a weird situation. But, you know, like I said before, like, I don't... I released all of those um, negative beliefs about myself. I released it all. And now I can just like be me and be happy and like actually show up as the confident person I've always been. But because I've leaned into something so hard, it like fucked with like my psyche and you know, so. You mentioned too in that video that, you know, because everything going on during the summer and even things before that, that you weren't really finding happiness and that your goal was really just to be at peace. Yep. What, what does peace look like for you? Peace for me. What is it you're trying to attain? Peace for me is standing by my life task. 
And for years, I've been searching. I'm like, what? What is my purpose here? Mm. And you know, that's a. It's always unfolding. But what I learned is, you know, I'm a healer. I've been a wounded healer, but now I feel so comfortable because I'm like, oh no, I'm here to heal, um, and inspire, and connect, and. That puts me at ease because now I'm not going onto social media in the way of I'm trying to have a viral video. I'm trying to almost be seen. I'm like, no, I want to like make meaningful art because that's what my soul connects with, and that's what it always did.、Um, You're looking for fulfillment. Fulfillment. You're looking for like a purpose for everything, not just like I said, not just a mindless reason of let's get these numbers up, but like having、right. a clear goal and clear purpose. Right. And you know that mindset, it wasn't bad because you know it got me financial、um, dependence, and I it got me out of, it, it got me to where I can you know flourish now. I just want a pl- I want to be able to make art that people enjoy because. It makes me happy when I'm entertaining others. Like I, I can't help it. I'm a natural born entertainer, and it's like it feels like you're giving a gift. And for me, I had to ask myself: It's like, what kind of person do I want to show up as on the internet or as a public figure? And I'm like,、mm-hmm. I need to be the person that I didn't have, or the other people that were my comfort people, like. Trisha Paytas, for example, like she got me through so many horrible days in high school because I knew she was gonna have a vlog and I can go home and I could finally feel like, oh, I have a friend. Oh, this is like, it, it felt like I had like something to live for.、Mm-hmm. So if I can be that for someone else, that's like to become、everything. like an escape for someone else in a sense. Yeah. Speaking of which, you mentioned that like your goal really was just to exist and show your art.、Mm-hmm. But, like, what what art are you wanting to show people? It's not music, is it?、Uh, Oh, not music.、Okay. I'm a photographer. I'm a creative director. I'm a music video director, and like, that's I wake up, and that's what sets my soul on fire. I walk for like three hours. I have my headphones in, and every song is what scene is this? What video? And like, I'm so excited to、um, delve into that. And you know, I found my own way. Of performing and showing my art through these videos, and I'm excited to like keep doing that. And as me as like an audience member watching you on socials and seeing like the stuff you're putting out, what can someone like me expect to see coming from you? And, and、yes. what, what do you what do you plan to like、yes. do down the road? Well, luckily, me and Spice, we have a show coming out soon, and、um, it's going to be our whole world. It's going to be、um, we're going to have guests on it and. This show is basically the sugar and spice experience of. You're not going to be mean to people and bring up childhood trauma, are you? Because、uh, that、no. would that would be a conflict of interest, right? No, it's going to be the the fun show that everyone wants to come on because it's you're hanging out with us, like,、mm-hmm. but it's us where it's like. We're friends with you, and like we just have the like, growing up with our friends, we had the most fun because we would just sit in our room for hours and we just go and like we're just we dive into that person's world. So I'm excited to like dive into people's worlds in long form. It's like I'm done being、um, held back by like a 30 second TikTok. It's like I want to speak, I want to share my voice because. You know, like this sounds dramatic, but sometimes there are messages given to people that they need to share.、Mm-hmm. But every, it's, a, it's a video, it's a conversation. I don't know. Y'all tune in and you'll well, see. That, that's that's the that's the marketing version. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. Well, with that, that is the last of my questions, last of my cards, and the last bit of time we had today. But before you go, I did want to give you something. I'm gonna give you a gift. I love、um, a gift. I wanted to make. I made you something. So. There are eight billion people on the planet, hundreds of thousands of drag queens, two coil twins, but there's only one of you. So I wanted to give you this bracelet as a reminder. You want to lock up? Oh, love that! Lock it up. What does it say? I was not. I'm like, what does that say? 
Magnus. Oh, oh my gosh, what does it say? It says one of one. One of one, I love that. Because there's only one of you. Oh, I was like, well, what, do you, what, do you get, what do you get someone <laughs> who has everything? And I said, something that Spice doesn't have. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to keep this forever. Um, today has been so much fun and you just like opening up your home and just to learn more about you has been, has made it all worth the while. Oh my God, um, you're, you're buttering me up too much. You're giving me too, too much of a service here. <laughs> but yeah, and with that, we are now at the end. So is there anything you want to play? You said you have like a, a show coming and stuff you're like working on behind yes. the scenes right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. They already follow you on social media. But I see it. You probably follow Sugar and Spice, but if you haven't already, they also have their own individuals. There's Sugar's yes. World, yes. Uh, the Spice of Your Life. What is her name? Uh, call Me Spice on call TikTok. Spice. So we have our own. Um, yeah, uh, TikTok, uh, YouTube, you know, just uh, there's every little nook and corner of the internet, you can find a little bit of of me, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But also, <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're going to die tomorrow anyway, so. There it is. That's the positive note to leave on. Yeah. But yeah. And you can find me right here. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And join us next time whenever we have somebody else. Yes. And yeah, until then. <laughs> Bye, guys. Let's go. Yay, yeah. we slayed. We did it. Damn.